Hello and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explore we're going to take a look at registration points. Registration points are sometimes uh, one of the more confusing things in interactive media so I thought I would take an exploration through some code looking at, um, at registration points. There have been many videos about using shapes in Zim and using containers in Zim, and all those videos uh, have information about registration points as well and give examples of what's going on. But maybe this one is uh, will be a more specific one geared right towards a registration point. So let's drop this down and get into some code. I'll go grab the template here from the code page. And copy that and uh, then drop this on down into Adam here and paste. And so I'm calling this registration.html. Zoom in on that and this will be available up on the zimjs.com slash explore page as well. Zim registration point. So this has been around for a while. Uh, most interactive uh, environments have something called a registration point. It's one of the transformations. So along with things like scale, x, y, width, height, uh, and, and registration point are there as well. So we're coming on down into Zim. We will put our code here and start off by uh, making a yeah well we can make a rectangle i guess so bar rect is equal to a new rectangle dot center and then we'll dot out well maybe before we dot outline let's just have a look at this we've got a stage dot update all should be good i'm assuming that you already know some things about Zim and all this kind of stuff as well. If not, then you, there's lots of other videos that you can look at. So let's view this in a browser. <clears throat> so there's our rectangle. Like so. And uh, <clears throat> we'll outline it. Let's make it a bit bigger so we can see it. Uh, 200 by 200. We'll also make it blue. And then we've got a dot outline, which allows us to see what is happening. And we refresh here. And there's our, our blue rectangle with the outline. So at the moment, the registration point is this round circle. The registration point is at the same place as the origin. The origin is the cross. And the cross is the 0, 0 within the rectangle. So if you do something like um, a new grid, like that, that grid will uh, naturally just go on the stage, but you can specify which uh, holder you want that to be in, which container. So we can say, please put that grid in the rect. And we refresh here. And there it is in the rectangle. It's right now in percentage, but if we go pixels, it's pixels. So you see, uh, as I go to half the rectangle, it's roughly 100, 100. Whereas if I go to the very right-hand corner of the rectangle, that's 200, 200. And if I go to the 0, 0, the cross, that is um, 0, 0. OK, so let's change the registration point now. <coughs> You can do that in a couple of ways. The old-fashioned way is saying rect.regx is equal to um, 100, and rect.regy is equal to 100. That would move that would move the registration point into the center of the rectangle. And let's see what happens. Refresh here. Okay, so the rectangle used to be here, but now the rectangle has its registration point in the center. So, uh, well, actually, this isn't, hang on. Uh, we'll outline it afterwards. Okay, so this was the traditional way of doing it, setting reg x and reg y, and that works fine, but we can also say reg 
uh, here dot reg and a, a short chainable and say 100 100 um, the issue was we had outlined it before we set the registration point so the outline just stayed how it was before but things moved we also set the registration point after centering so these are some issues we're going to deal with in the future but right now I just want to um, see the effects of changing the registration point and using the outline to show that so uh, we're setting the registration point now before we center it and um, where we outline there. So we refresh here. And this is what I was expecting to see. We go back to uh, pixels. So now we've moved the round registration point into the middle. So that's 100, 100 roughly. Well, it is 100, 100. And yet look at the origin has not changed. The origin is still back here at 0, 0. So when you change a registration point, they're completely independent from the origin. Okay. Um, we have centered the rectangle, and that, uh, that's a Zim center. And Zim center takes a look at the outside edges of what's called the bounding box and makes the distance the same to the bounding box. So Zim Center pays no attention to the origin and no attention to the registration point. Um, Zim Center, Center Reg will always center the, uh, the box in a sense. And same with pose. If you pose things to the right hand side or the top, bottom and left, it poses only based on the edge against that. So if it's posing to the right, it only pays attention to this edge right here and sets that distance. Whereas loc is another matter. Loc locates the registration point and pays no attention to the origin. As a matter of fact, hardly anything pays attention to the origin. Only if you're adding things inside the container will that origin come into place. Okay, so origin has absolutely no uh, relevance when positioning an object from the outside. It only has relevance when you're putting something on the inside. It becomes basically you can think of this object as a little mini stage with its origin right here. Just like our stage, our big stage, has the origin in the top left corner. The container has the origin in its top left corner. Well, not always. So uh, that's another issue. Just maybe I'll mention it now. It's not really registration point exactly, but just be careful. If you make your own container, right now the origin is at the top left corner of the bounds. That's not always the case. You can make a container that has the X of the bounds, say negative, way over here and the y of the bounds negative. Say way over here, the origin will be 0, 0 here, but the red box will be out here, and the registration point can be somewhere else. So the x and y of the bounds is independent of the origin. Okay, and so is the registration point. And all three of those things are independent from one another and can create some complexities, I must say, especially when you bring in nesting containers and rotating containers and scaling containers <laughs> and scaling objects and things like that. And all of that had to be worked through so that we could get this nice center in here. But right now we're talking registration point. So what else about this uh, registration point? Let's just uh, make sure you get the fact that the object is positioned at the registration point. So we'll go back here and mm, let's see. We don't need a grid anymore, I don't think. Well, actually, we could put the grid on the outside. I suppose we could. New grid, because we're going to show you where things get positioned. And we can say percent colon false to jump right into the pixels there. So var rect is a new rectangle. Um, let's not bother with the registration point change for now. We'll just keep it at 0, 0 to start off. And we won't use center. Instead, now we're going to use loc. So uh, we're going to dot loc that at, say, 100, 100. OK. So um, let's see what that looks like. Save that, open in browser. I should probably just tab this thing over there, but we'll get there eventually one, one year. All right, so now the registration point and the origin 
as at the left hand corner, which is default for most rectangular things. And you can see that that's been positioned at 100 over in the X and 100 down in, in the Y. Okay, um, let's move that a slight bit. Let's move it to 300, 300, give us some room there. And uh, well, we'll take a peek at that again, 300, 300. There it is at 300, 300. Now what I'm going to do is change the registration point to um, say uh, 100, 100 again. What will happen, well actually let's just change the registration point to 100 in the X and 0 in the Y. If we do that, the registration point in the rectangle gets put right here. But the object is positioned at 300, 300, which is right there. So basically what happens, registration point gets put here, but then the whole object shifts over, so the registration point's here, and the rectangle comes to there. So let's see that in place. Reg 100 and nothing. So that just sets the reg y to nothing there. And that's what happens. The registration point stays exactly the same because the object is positioned at its registration point, 300, 300. But the registration point is shifted relative to the object here, so that makes the object be positioned like so. Okay, another thing that happens with the registration point, aside from that's where the object's positioned, and I think most people actually know that already, but another thing that happens with the registration point is that's where it will scale from and that's where it will rotate about. So if we go and scale this now, then it's going to scale about this point right here in the middle. So that means it'll scale this way and it will scale that way and it will scale down. But it will not scale up because we're right on the edge of this. So it's going to kind of push it out and down if it's like this. If we put it in the middle, then it will push it out in all directions. If we push it in this corner, then it will, uh, or sorry, if we put it in that corner, then it will push it out to the left and out upwards. So let's just take uh, a look at that. I suppose an easy way to see that is to, um, <coughs> excuse me, is to animate it. So dot animate like that. And we'll animate, uh, we'll want a loop too, so we'll go to props, colon uh, scale, colon two. We could just set it, but it's, it's sometimes nice to see it animate. And then we will loop colon true, like so. Hopefully that's not going too fast for your time, colon mm, two seconds. All right, so we save that up, and let's see what we've got. So there it is. Oh darn. oh darn. You see what we missed there? May as well put in a rewind colon true. And I don't think we need the grid anymore. So there it is scaling out from the registration point. And as mentioned, if we. Uh, if we were to put the re registration point top left corner, too many of these things open. If we put the registration top left corner, so that would be zero zero. Let's um, let's move this a little bit more. So four hundred, four hundred. So registration point zero zero. There it goes, and now what I'm going to do is move it uh, to the registration point here. So when we move the registration point to the bottom right corner, that's going to move this whole object sitting up here, and then we're going to scale it, and we'll see what happens when we when we scale it. So I'm going to remove the registration point to 200, 2000. By the way, you can re move the registration point off out of the shape, and that's fine. We can try that if you want in this explorer. So now that the, the re you see the position of it has not changed, we're at 400, 400 or whatever, and that's why I moved it over so that we could see it also scaling out this way. So there it is scaling up and scaling across. And indeed, if you, um, if you move it outside even more, say 
well, I guess we could do it at 300. That's going to move it over even. Oh, well, let's move it over and look uh, 600. There we go. And we refresh here. So here's its registration point right here. Seem to have done it in the Y. I didn't expect to do that. Um, and so now you can see that the edge is not even staying on the edge. The whole box is moving out. Basically, it's a proportional scaling from this location. So what else can we say about the registration point? Rotation works the same way. If we rotate this, then it would rotate about this point. So let's try that. Instead of scaling, we will rotate rotation and I guess 360 slow it down a little bit um, five seconds and here's what we get so now this uh, this box is rotating about that point it looks a little bit strange doesn't it because it's right on the ed edge of the box but um, if we centered it I suppose in right here if we put the registration point like here I guess then it would look a little bit more normal let's try that so that would be the registration point three is outside we'll put this one at half halfway along so we refresh here okay is that a little bit more balanced So normally when we, reg when we center, and this can be handy, by the way, um, it, it can be used to, say, do a fan to animate a whole bunch of things around a point. The easiest way is to just set the registration point to the, the, the radius of what you want to, basically that's the radius of what you're wanting to circle about. So that allows you to spin something around a point as opposed to trying to animate it in some other way, you know, the, the, like with sines and cosines and stuff like that would be a little bit ridiculous. So it is a technique. As a matter of fact, we can animate the registration point and get effects as well. So let's try that. We'll dot animate, uh, tack it right onto here, dot animate. Um, the props of the reg uh, this is the reg y, I guess, to 0. 0 is where? 0 is the top of it, uh, to 100. So that would be to the middle of it. Okay, and we are going to do that in a certain amount of time. Let's see, it's taking 5 seconds to spin the thing. We may as well make it 5 seconds, and what happens? It'll come into the middle. So time of 5 seconds. All right, you ready? So this is us animating the registration point, and you get an effect like this. So that thing just animated into center. Hey, it didn't rewind and keep the registration point, though, did it? Wow, is that a glitch? Oh, yeah, because all we did was animate it. It's not a glitch. Um, so we just animated it once. We want to keep these things too. Scared me. There we go. Um, so if we loop and rewind at the same rate, then we're going to see it go back out again. <laughs> okay, so in it comes to the center. Um, back it goes. Maybe we don't want it to go to the center. It may, it may have been under this circumstance. We just want it to go to the edge of the box. And that would look like this. So the edge of the box would be not to 100, but uh, the edge of the box is 200, because that's the um, size of the box there. So that would look like this. And if you do this enough times, if you rotated uh, oh, more quickly, you would end up with a big spiral. So basically, this makes you could sit up here and it could spiral in and arrive at something and then spiral back out again. So that makes um, makes a spiral by animating the registration point. Sometimes it's handy to like say you're putting something inside something else 
it's rather than to move the object, it can sometimes be handy to, to change uh, the object's location with the registration point. Uh, it keeps everything centered up. Uh, so imagine, um, well, I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head why we do that, but I know I do that sometimes. Uh, just one thing you you need to watch if you want to move something down here's a test for you now if you want to move something down using the registration point do you make the registration points y bigger or do you make the registration points y smaller to perceptually move the the object down let's let's try it I'm close i can't think when that things whipping around like that so I'll take off the animations there Let's move to a circle. Just comment out all that. Because another thing about registration points is anything rectangular gets its registration point in the top left corner by default. Of course, you can change that. But anything circular dot uh, center dot outline. Oh, that reminds me as well. There is the center reg, as most of you know. So uh, now we just animated a rectangle about uh, an offset registration point. Normally, when you animate a rectangle, you want to animate about its center. And so there is a center reg as well, center reg, which will center the registration point of the rectangle and center it on the stage. So. That uh, looks like this. Dot center reg, just before we move along there. So, what have I done down below? Mm, not going to center it not yet. So, there's a new rectangle with its uh, center reg, and then we can dot outline that just to make sure that you see that. And open it up in the browser. Mm. New rectangle blue dot center reg dot outline. I think we want. Okay, so there it is. Uh, we've centered the registration point now, and the whole box is centered there. So there is sometimes we want to center reg something without, uh, without, say we uh, want to locate it somewhere. Although this wouldn't matter, 100, 100. Uh, that would be fine. It would center the reg and then it would replace it with that. But if uh, for some reason, say we want to locate later, uh, like not chained on, but we want to locate later, but we just want to prepare the rectangle with the center reg, you can also say add colon false there. So this uh, had happened with tiling. If you tile something, it makes a clone of it. And therefore, uh, if you s get the, the rectangle that you want to tile and you center regged it, then it would end up adding that and then tiling the clones. And it would leave this, it, it would leave the first rectangles just center regged on the stage. Uh, eventually we realized, well, that's really annoying. And so we made it automatically so that when we tile something, we don't clone every object. We we actually keep the first object as a real object, then we clone from then on. And that way it, you know, it prevented that issue. But there are other times that that issue comes up. I can't remember if with, um, uh, for instance, center regging a particle emitter. We may have fixed that up in the particle emitter, so it does not do that too. But um, it, there may be times that you want to center the registration point, but not actually add it to the stage, at which point you can do that. If you need to. I think it happens in styles. If you style something, the center reg, it ends up adding it unless you tuck that uh, extra stuff in there. All right. Um, there we've center regged the rectangle, and that just shows you that uh, there is that procedure, and then you can rotate around it. So dot rote 45, for instance, will um, we'll put that there for you. 45. Oh. Well, that would be located, I forgot. Uh, uh, no locate, please. <laughs> no locate. And here, refresh. 
So there it is, rotated 45 degrees around its center just fine. But when you animate a rectangle, usually you want its center wedge. Also with physics, you'll want to center wedge your physics objects. And that way it uh, works properly with Box2D, which has all center wedged objects. Okay, so uh, enough of that one then. Let's get rid of that and the loc and the outline there. And comment, oops, see daisy. I hate it when that happens. And comment that out too. All right. So we're back down to the circle, which gets its registration point in center. And let's have a look there. There she be. So by default, the without even doing a center reg, a circle gets its registration point and its origin in the middle. So this is an example where the x of the bounds is going to be negative half of the, negative the radius of the circle, and the y is negative. Now note that the width of those bounds is still the width of the circle. So even though the x starts negative, the width of the bounds doesn't change. So in, the, in your set bounds or get bounds setting, uh, that's the situation. Sometimes the x and y can be negative like that, or some other big positive number, or whatever, whatever it wants to be. It just will position the box at that. And that's independent of the origin, which is 0, 0 within that container. Okay, so there it is. Now, what was I going to show you about with this? Um, anybody remember? Something to do with the registration point. That's what we're dealing with. Oh, yes, it was. If we want to move this circle down a little bit without using move, MOV or without setting its X and Y again with loc move MOV is uh, relative movement uh, whereas loc is absolute movement okay so if we wanted to move this there is another way we could move it down using its registration point so the question was would we move the registration point down or would we move the registration point up <laughs> so it's uh, well, actually, in this case, it's not going to. It's not going to do either. Um, so that there's your answer, because Zim has centered it. So no matter where we move the registration point, Zim will still center it on its um, its bounds there. So we can't we can't position it like that and have this work. We would have to not center, but loc at stage width divided by two, and stage height divided by two. Okay, now using its registration point, it's uh, dot reg. Well, let's do it after we outline dot reg. We are going to set uh, null. So we want to only move it up or down. So we don't want to change the registration point of the um, of the circle, uh, the x of it. We only want to change the registration y of it. So just to be careful, I think the registration point, do you remember? What is the registration point at? It's in the middle of the circle, so it's sort of like, well, it's in the middle of the circle. It must be at some number then. No, it, well, it is. It's at zero, zero. It's at zero, zero because the origin is also in the middle. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, so we could put zero there and be just fine. But if we're not wanting to change that, the safer way is to put null there. And now, if we put it at, say, 100, the question is, is, will this appear, will the circle shape appear to move down, or will it appear to move up? Well, let's uh, try it. Keep it in your mind. What's it going to do? And we pop on over here. And are you ready? So we're going to take this round ring, and in the shape, we're moving it 100 down. So that, that'll be like right here. But if we move the registration point to here, the whole shape gets picked up and gets moved up to uh, half the stage width and half the stage height. So by moving the registration to 100, we're going to end up moving the circle up. And we save this, and there it is. So um, remember that we had the, the outline was done before we changed the registration point. So here's where it all was before. And now it's moved up to there. If we um, make the outline move along with it, this is what we'll see. So if we put the outline after here, can you imagine what we're going to see? 
So now it will outline it again. What will we see? Well, the registration point is going to stay here because um, this is where we placed it. But this box right here is going to move up. And what about the X? What will the X do? The X will move up as well. So we haven't changed the X. We haven't changed the box. All we did was change the round thing. There you go. So um, it looks like this must be 50 because we moved it up. We moved this thing 100. So this is 100, but the radius is, is only 50 there. Okay, so that's what that looks like. There's the box. We didn't change anything but the registration point, and uh, we moved it 100, and that's where we end up putting that thing. So now if you were to spin this, the circle would start spinning around the registration point. If you scale it, it will scale from this registration point, which I don't think is as useful, the scale, but certainly the rotation around that's quite handy. That gives us like rotating around planets and stuff like that. And if you put this in a container, so if this whole thing were in a container, then you could scale the Y of the container and you would get the planet would kind of move on an uh, ellipse like that as well. And 3D is born. Uh, okay, I think that's probably pretty good for registration points. I don't know if there's anything uh, more to say. They can be tricky. Uh, but they're also extra tricky when you combine dealing with registration points, dealing with uh, the X and Y of the bounds, the width of the bounds uh, when you're dealing with scaled and uh, nested nested objects and stuff. If you, if you want to see what that's like, then just go in and take a look at the center reg and center and pose uh, inside of Zim if you view the source of those, you'll see that there's a, a lot more to think about than expected to be able to handle that. There's local to global kind of stuff, and the bounds don't necessarily local to global in the same way. So at some point, I think we're finding the points of the, of the bound rectangle, converting all of those points local to global, global to local, and then sort of redrawing based on those bounds to get things like the position of something away from the edge. Uh, because as things rotate, um, we don't, you have to worry about the uh, slightly different <laughs> bounds. It's like it's, it's weird. Anyway, go in and take a look at that. And this has been a Zim Explorer, and I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully that's uh, helped you out on registration point. Cheers and have a great day. Ciao.